Hello, I'm Susan and I'm with King County Wastewater Treatment Division and today you're with me to talk about water. Some of us have never really thought about it, but we use it every single day. Now for today's lesson, you're going to need a few things. Um, before we dive in, let's go over some of the materials that you're going to use. I'll put up a list as well, but uh, before we start, make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil or markers. Also, some containers. They don't have to be big. Small containers of like Tupperware containers or bowls with some kind of lid though. That. And you also need one sheet of toilet paper, one tissue, and one paper towel or wipe. Okay? you have any of those things at, at your home, go ahead and get them now. All right, so we're all ready for a lesson? Okay, so who used water today? Raise your hand if you used water. Who didn't use water? Who's not sure if they used water? My guess is every single person used water. Even if you didn't, think about it, even if you didn't take a drink of water, which I do every single day. Hopefully you do too, because it's very good for us. But even if you didn't take a drink of water, you've used water. Brushing your teeth, flushing your toilet, okay? These are all things that use water every day. Now, it's super important, water is, and we use a lot of it. Can anybody think, make a guess, how much water do you think you use? The average person here in the United States, how much do you use per day? Think about it. Okay, now call out your answer. Now we're gonna say this in gallons. Everybody might not know what a gallon is. Okay, a gallon is this, okay? This is a gallon. How many of these do you think we use every day? Who said five? Who said 10? Who said 20? 30? Who said more than that? Well, guess what? We use over a hundred of these per person per day. That's a lot of water. And when we use this water, we get it pretty dirty. We put a lot of things in that water. Humans are really good at making water dirty. And today, we're going to think just a little bit about where that water comes from and where does it go? And how are we connected to the water cycle? Okay, so now you have your piece of paper and your pencil or markers. We're going to do a little bit of drawing together of our water cycle. All right, so for me, I'm going to start off drawing a little bit of the land, okay? And I'm going to draw some land, maybe some mountains on my land, go like that. All right, so that's my land. You can draw whatever you want. Okay. Now, also what I like on my land is a lot of trees. Trees are great. Trees are great for the environment. We always have to have lots of green trees. They help us breathe. All right. You can put as many trees as you want. Right. And now comes the water part. So when I think of water and the water cycle, I think about when water comes down from the sky. Okay? Water comes down from the sky, and what do we call it? It's a big science word. It starts with a P. Call it out if you know it. Precipitation. Yes, precipitation is a big science word for things like what? Right, rain, snow, okay? sleet. All those things come down from the sky, all right? 
So precipitation, yes. And then that water lands on a different places. It lands on the ground, doesn't it? Lands on the top of mountains. Sometimes you would get snow on the top of mountains. I'm gonna put some snow on the top of my mountains. And that water, sometimes I like to show other kinds of water, like a river, maybe a lake, and maybe even the ocean, okay? Lots of water in our environment, okay? So, Back to the water comes down, precipitation, and then the water flows over the ground and it comes together, or there's another science word called accumulation. It accumulates, it comes together, and that can be in lakes, it can be in ponds. It also can go underground and accumulate underground. You might not have known that. Now, then the water goes somewhere else. Where else does the water? So the water's coming down, it's precipitating, comes together, it's accumulating, and then, this is my favorite part, the sun comes out, and the water starts going back up and turns from a liquid to a gas, and there's another big science term we use. What is it? it starts with E, E, yes, evaporation. And it goes straight back up, 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 up. It also, not just from our lakes and our oceans and other does it evaporate, but also there's a special, another one that you may not have heard of. It's called transpiration. And it comes out of our trees too and goes up. I know, crazy. And then once it gets up, way up high, it comes together and forms clouds. You can draw some clouds. And what do we call that? Condensation, okay? If you said condensation, you got it. All right, so this, as the water moves, it goes down, it accumulates around, and it goes back up. This, this is our water cycle. There's something missing in this water cycle. Today, we said we were talking about how humans are part of this water cycle. So, we need to add. If you said people, you are correct. So, let's add some people. Let's add people. All right. And we're going to add some buildings because people live in houses. We work in tall buildings, some people, not me, but some people do, okay? All kinds of buildings that we have. Put a little house out here. All right. So we've added our people into our water cycle. And so the interesting thing is people, we use a lot of water, don't we? We're really good at pulling the water out of the water cycle, getting it really dirty, and then we put it back. So where do we get it from? Hmm, that's a good question. Where do we get all that water that comes into our homes and our schools? Where do we get it from? Well, depends. Um, some water comes from this snow that's in the mountains that goes down into lakes or reservoirs. Sometimes people get water from underground, okay? This is the underground, but sorry, this was the lake, okay? And that water is fresh water that's cleaned and it gets piped from those places to our homes, okay? It goes to our homes. And that's what our drinking water is, okay? It can go from these different places to our homes and our buildings and our schools, and we use that as drinking water, okay? Then, like I said, we get it really, really, really dirty. And then where does it go? Once we flush our toilets, once we take a shower, where does all that go? Think about that. Hmm, what do you think? Well, it goes 
to a wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna be talking about a little bit more in some of our other lessons, okay? Is more about that treatment plant and what happens. You'll even get to take a tour, a video tour of a treatment plant. And then that treatment plant cleans the water and it sends it back out could be to an ocean, could be to a lake, could be underground, depending on where you live. Right? That water gets cleaned and it's put back into the water cycle. And so this cycle goes around and around and around, but we are a part of that water cycle. And it's our job to make sure if we use the water and get it dirty, that we also clean it. So we just talked about the water cycle and how water moves and how people are a part of that water cycle. And one of the problems is we only have so much water on our planet, okay? It looks like there's a lot of water and it's blue, but most of that water is water that we can't use every day. It's not fresh, clean water. So we need to protect our water. And like I said, we're really good at getting water dirty. That water, gets pumped to our houses every single day, uh, or wherever you live, it comes in, we use it. We use it in so many different ways. I want you to think about what are all, some of the ways, okay, that we use water and how we get it dirty. Yeah. Because guess what? It's really hard to clean it after we dirty it up. It goes to what's called a wastewater treatment plant. It's like a factory. Imagine a factory that has to clean our water and then it puts it back into the water cycle. So today we're gonna think a little bit more about all the things that we put in the water and what it takes to get all of that out. All right, so now we gotta think some more. Where all the places where we live, where we use water. If you want to take a minute, you can stand up. You can go walk around where you live and just look. Where are there drains? Where is water coming into or leaving where I live? Go ahead, take a minute and do it. You can put pause the video if you need to. All right, so you may have gone, done a tour of your house, looked around, or maybe not, that's okay. But we're gonna think about it together. So where did you see water being used in your house? Maybe in a bathroom you saw water? Yeah, a lot of water is used in our bathrooms. You may have seen water being used in a kitchen? We use a lot of that, the kitchen drains, okay? You may have seen a lot of water being used, where else? Where you do laundry, laundry room, yeah, okay, can see that. Okay, so now it's used in a lot of places and there's a lot of drains in there. In the bathroom we have sinks, we have what else? Call them out. Yep. Sink, toilet, toilet is a type of drain. What else do we have in there? Shower, bathtub, yep, all those things. What else did you see in your kitchen? What was in your kitchen? Call it out if you know it. Yep. We have a sink in our kitchen, certainly. Dishwasher, did anybody think about dishwasher? Not everybody has a dishwasher. I didn't have a dishwasher. Um, laundry is another place. There's a lot of places that you might not even think about where water's being used and getting dirty. But what gets in this water? Hmm. We're gonna start making a list. So I want you to get out your piece of paper or turn your paper over where you wrote your water cycle or do your drawing. And we're gonna make a list. I want you to start thinking of all of the things that we put in water. Remember, think about all those drains in your bathroom, in your kitchen, laundry. What is all the things that get in it? 
so many things. All right, I'm gonna give you a minute to go ahead and write down your list. All right, I'm gonna start writing my list too, okay? As we go. So, bathroom. Oh, so many things get in the water. Soaps. Who got soaps? Did anyone else write soaps? Yep, soaps. Uh, shampoos. Toothpaste. I hope toothpaste. I hope you're brushing your teeth. Yes, the dentist. I'm very proud of you. Toothpaste. And what else in the bathroom? Hmm? Did you think about the toilet? Stuff in the toilet is some of my favorite stuff. Yep. Yeah, I know. We talk about it all the time where I work. It is the stuff that I know sometimes we're not supposed to talk about, but guess what? For today, we are talking about it. And all the other lessons you're gonna do, you're gonna really talk about it. And that's the stuff that goes down the toilet. It is the pee, the poop, right? The pee, the poop, that definitely goes down. Another one that you might think about, bleh, puke. We certainly put puke, I hope. Hopefully you make it to the toilet when you have to puke. Um, and there is lots of other things that get put down, sadly, toilets. Things like wipes. And things like dental floss. Q-tips, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and I forgot to mention, toilet paper, of course. Hopefully you're using toilet paper, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that are going down the toilet in the bathroom, oh my gosh, so, 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 so many things. Uh, well, there's also a lot of things in the kitchen, laundry, some of the same things, soaps are being used. Okay, we can put soaps in pretty much all of these cat places, soaps, Kitchen, we of course also have lots of stuff, little scraps of food. Also grease or oils. All of these things get it, okay? So this is a pretty big list, okay? Now you may have noticed that I wrote these out in a few different colors. It's because we like to put these in different categories. So hold on a second and whoop, I'm gonna rearrange these. Okay, so now we're gonna put all those things that you just listed in four categories. Okay. You're gonna help me. So first off, I want you to think about all of the soaps, shampoos, toothpaste. One thing we didn't also mention is cleaners. That's a huge one, okay? We clean everything all over our house and all that gets into our water. So what do you think that category might be? Think about all those things. Well, we, we just call those the chemicals. So write that down, chemicals. That's one of our big categories that you have to get out of the water. Now, second one, all of the poop, the pee, the puke, yep, and the food, all those things that get in it, we call that organics. Organics. All right, write that one down. The third one, we didn't really talk about. It's the hidden one. What else is in the water that we didn't write down? But you may have already thought about it, or maybe you wrote it on your paper. It's the tiny, teeny, microscopic things that sometimes make us sick. Call it out if you know it. If you said, germs, you're right, or bacteria. Huh? So, 
Or even, you might have used this big science word, microbes. That means little tiny microscopic things. Yeah, okay. So germs or microbes. Germs or microbes. Yeah. These are some of the things that we try to get out. Oh, wait, there's one more. This is a special one. This one is some of the things that we talked about that get in there. Dental floss, uh, Q-tips sometimes, all those kind of things. Yeah, these we put in a category called trash. Now, one of the things that's a problem is sometimes people don't know what is trash and what's not trash. What should I put down a toilet or what shouldn't I put down a toilet? We're gonna do a little experiment to find out. So, we're gonna start our experiment in just a minute. But as a reminder, some things are pretty obvious, as we said, of what is trash. Like, what do you think might definitely be trash? Like, you know is trash and shouldn't be put down a toilet. Dental floss, I mentioned that. Band-aids. Maybe even toys. Has anybody ever flushed? Go ahead, admit it, you flushed a toy, or maybe you have a brother or sister who flushed a toy down a toilet. Yeah, those are obvious. Also, I know this one. Might not be as obvious, but it is to me. Q-tip. So many Q-tips. So we get so much trash put in the water. So much trash every day that goes down people's toilets and comes to a wastewater treatment plant when the water gets cleaned. So much that this, this right here, uh, this is all trash that's in our water, our wastewater. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. This is real trash that people flush down their toilets. And this okay, amount comes to our treatment plant every single minute of every single day. That is a lot of trash. All right, so now we're gonna start our experiment. Um, I went over the materials in the beginning, but just as a reminder, you need three, some containers, Tupperware containers with lids. So if you have it so that you can put a lid on it, they don't have to look like this. They can be bigger or smaller, but as long as they have a lid. Okay, so we need three of those. You need one piece of toilet paper, one tissue, and one either wipe or paper towel. Um, I'm gonna use wipes, okay? So, are you ready? We're gonna lay our things out. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to put a little bit of water. So imagine that each one of these containers is like a little toilet. Okay, we're kind of doing a model of a toilet and what happens in a toilet. A little bit of water in each. Because of course in your toilet, there's water in the bottom of your toilet. And we're going to do an experiment again to remember what really is trash? How do we know if something's trash? Well, the way we know if something is trash is that it doesn't break up when it goes down the toilet. Okay, and we're gonna test these three things. Tissue, wipe, and toilet paper. Okay, so uh, I'm going to grab my tissues. Okay, here's my tissues. But before I start and put it in, I'm gonna make a prediction or a guess. What do I think? is gonna happen to this tissue when I put it in the water and I flush it or shake it, what is gonna happen to it? What's my prediction? So take a minute, think about to yourself, what do I think is going to happen? If you want to, you can even write it down. What's my prediction? My prediction for the tissue is, and write it down. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put my tissue in there. Okay, I'm going to close it up nice and tight. And I, just like a toilet, I'm gonna shake it and swirl it like it's flushing. And you do it with me, all right? Make sure it's not tight. And if it's a little water, it gets a little messy, it's okay, all right? It's just clean water. Are you ready? Start flushing. Go! Flush, 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 a little bit more flushing. And stop. Okay, so I'm not sure what your prediction was, but my prediction was that maybe the tissue would break down a little bit. Um, and let's see. All right. I'm going to pull it out, feel it. Oh, interesting. Pull yours out. Look at it. Well, my tissue, it it's kind of breaks apart, but I don't see any thing in the water. It's just pretty much just tiny, teeny, maybe little pieces, but really the tissue has all stayed together. Huh. Interesting. Not what most people predict. Most people think tissues are just like anything else, that they can go straight down the toilet. Hmm. I'm not sure. This one doesn't seem like it does that, so it's actually trash. It shouldn't be down the toilet. All right, wipes. Let's try our wipes next, okay? Now I have my wipes here. If you don't have a wipe uh, at your house, you can also use a paper towel, napkin, something else. Just some other thing that might get put down a toilet. Um, these wipes are actually flushable wipes. Hmm. So flushable wipes should be able to be flushed, right? Okay, well, let's test it. Put it in, I'm gonna put my lid on it. Ready? Flush, 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 that it wouldn't break up at all. Let's see if I'm right. Yep. Even a flushable wipe doesn't break down when it goes into a toilet and down the pipes. See, the water's completely clear. And this is just like a wet wipe. It hasn't barely broken down at all. Clogs. Lots of clogs because of these wipes. So definitely, definitely trash. So far, everything's trash. Well, toilet paper. Our last one. Let's make a prediction. Okay, I got my prediction. All right? Toilet paper. Take off a piece of toilet paper, put it in. Put the top on. Are you ready? Go. Flush, 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 swirl, 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 flush, 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 it's almost dissolved in that short of a time. So, hmm, the toilet paper breaks down. It does, just like it's supposed to. So now we have a better idea of what is trash, what shouldn't be put down a toilet, and what should. And from this experiment, I've learned that toilet paper only. Of course, the poop, the pee, and also puke. Good idea to put those in the toilet for sure. But toilet paper is the only other thing besides that should get put down. Okay, that was super fun. I hope you guys had fun doing our experiment. So now we have a better idea of what trash is. And going back to think about those four categories that we talked about, okay? 
Trash was one of them. Chemicals, bacteria or germs or microbes, the little tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny things. That's the other thing that gets put down in there. And of course, organics, the poop, the pee, the food. So those four things are what we talk about gets in our wastewater. And the idea is it's pretty hard to get those things out. How do you think we get them out? Hmm. Well, in the next lesson, you're going to find out. You're going to make some fake wastewater and do another type of experiment with us. And you're going to test different ways of trying to get the water clean. So thank you so much and have fun in the next lesson.